Welcome home. We are WNST AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. We are taking the Maryland Crab Cake Tour on the road. I have these awesome Pac-Man scratch-offs. They look cool. They allow me to do funny things on my screen when I'm doing my YouTube uh, introductions. We're going to be up at Green Mount Bowl, next to Green Mount Station, next to the casino and the Horse Palace and all that stuff. Um... They got me when they put the Baltimore Positive logo up on the uh, the backdrop of the bowling alley. Uh, so we're going to be uh, – we're not going to be having bowling alley pizza. We're going to be having Green Mount Station crab cakes. Uh, and uh, we're going to be talking about the horse racing industry. That's on Wednesday, 2 until 4. We're getting together for the Oriole game. I'm going to probably move over and watch the Oriole game next door and have a beverage up in Carroll County. We'll be in Hampstead. It's all brought to you by the Maryland Lottery in conjunction with our friends at uh, – we have, we have a new sponsor, Liberty Pure Solutions. So uh, They're a new old sponsor. They've been with us many times. A uh, big shout-out to Doug and everybody over there keeping my water clean, making sure that my coffee is fresh in my coal roofing mug and my Rofo, and we're bringing it all together. And then next Friday, we're going to be down at Fadley's. Luke and I will be uh, wrapping up the draft in the middle of the draft, and then he's – headed to the draft and we'll see if I can get into the Orioles game because uh, the Oakland athletics will be in town. That's the 26th. Uh, we'll be at Fadley seafood at the new Lexington market. You got to get down uh, bill. We, we always say on the show, nothing good happens in Baltimore, right? Man, there's progress everywhere. Have you been to the new Fadley's yet, dude? If you've been to the new Fadley's, you'd know there's progress happening right in downtown Baltimore. I promise you. Yeah, no, I haven't made it there yet. I do. I do have a piece of like uh, horse racing trivia, if you if you want to give it a shot so okay uh, in a meeting yesterday i made the comment that i just was making it up i wasn't really sure whether it was true or not but it was driving him a point it was that no triple crown winning horse led every race at the quarter pole so the complexity of the question is so even secretariat wasn't winning at the quarter pole yeah my 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 point to the crew was like our first quarter with all the weather we've had wasn't like the most wonderful quarter and i was like but we we got to still run the race you know we can still win the race guys we still have three more quarters and it's like all the triple crown winners none of them were winning in all three races at the quarter pole of every race see i love that you know Whenever we get together, whenever I'm doing something at Accelerant with you or I'm out at any of these things, there's always a sports component that certainly white men in our culture use to measure themselves for their management, for their basketball team, for their golf game. We just got off of Masters for their pickleball game. You know, we're all measuring and measuring. It is interesting. I bring Bill Cole from Cole Roof going, who is like a legitimate CEO. He's one of those guys like me with the Baltimore accent that actually has run things for 30 or 40 years. His company, of course, has been 100 years. But like, it's interesting that taxes this week, right? And I wound up, you know, like, getting in under the quarter pole and trying to get that done with Leonard Raskin as well. In measuring things, we're measuring things all the time in our lives and business. And I guess this brings us to the baseball conversation around yours and even football, because the football team can't measure itself until September. They can't play. That's the only measurement they really have other than money, which we don't know about. But the baseball thing, we're all like sort of measuring this every day, right? And getting back into the flow of, Tyler Wells being injured and when are they home next time and dad take me to the game I have to like a turkey dinner stick my thermometer into you and find out where you are because before we began this segment before I started having you know coffee in the coal roofing mug you started talking to me about Oriole baseball Dude, I've known you a long, long time. You don't ever begin conversations with me that begin with, hey, my kid went to the ball game last week. So please do tell. I that want some real baseball out of you. It is very true. Uh, no, I, I think my question for you, because you're always closer to the pulse of it, is in my universe, there is a heightened fever and interest and willingness to participate. So people that I know that have previously not even going to the real game didn't even really hit their radar. Are these some of the people who voted for the orange guy who said, I ain't never going downtown because that group is a whole, they go downtown when Garth Brooks comes or when there's the right concert right. or the right thing. If the Orioles become that right thing, then oh, we have a Baltimore positive moment now, don't we? 
Well, yeah, and I, I guess I, I would move I would put my awareness in a couple different buckets. So like from a my young daughter's perspective, right? The kids. Barely knows the rules of baseball, you've said many, many times to me, right. correct? And it is on their radar. Right. Like it's on the because their radar. girlfriends now, and boyfriends and friend friends and neighborhood friends are going or their yes. parents like people it's getting going, into the nerve center is what you're saying. People are going. Teachers are talking about it. Schools making note of it like it's hitting their. There's a Don Moeller in every school that has an Oriole jersey on on Fridays at the yep. school. Like, right. Yep. And and then, you know, uh, so and so's Instagram or Snap shows them at the game. Oh, they went to the game. You know, They have wow, fun. Okay, Did they have right. fun? Yeah, of did course, your did your course. son have a good time? Uh yeah, yeah. But give me the circum that now, does he's your... a totally different. He's a different category right no, now. But but that's fine. But is he a soccer lacrosse? Is he a sports guy? Is he a Raven guy? Like, give me the profile because we don't ever he's talk a, about this. He's a play, not watch sports person, right? Like, okay. and, and he'll play anything, right? But he likes to play over watch. Um, but he's also. You know, 21, getting ready to graduate college, living his best life. So Pickles is interesting and, you know, his friends are interesting. And so that was, like I said, I, Loyola bought the tickets for the seniors, graduating seniors. I don't know if that's something they do. So his year. gateway is not even Manny Machado or Buck Showalter. His gateway isn't even I love Adley Rutschman. His gateway is social, completely Correct. social. Correct. Right. Not talking and, about Tyler Wells being hurt or who's pitching tonight or we love Jackson Holiday, but doesn't really know if he's left handed or right handed or care much. Correct. And and if if school hadn't have bought the tickets and, and all the you know, all his people were going school he, gave him an entree to go. And now okay. if dad says, do you want to go? Maybe he'll go back as long as he can go to pickles. Right. Well, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Well, that 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 part has yet to be unpacked. I think. Like, would you do that again? Not in a school related environment. Sure, with his buddies. Yeah, probably. You know what I mean? Like, but he went on Friday night, and it was bananas. Like, I had picked him up. We took care of something, and then oh, I it was the Jackson up, Holiday night. Like, I was at Fadley's. No, I know how crazy it was, it was in there. It was bananas down there. Like, it was. It felt really, really good. And I'm, you know whatever old curmudgeon dad i'm just driving through the city getting ready to drop him off trying to figure out which which red light we're chauffeur cole he's gonna, jump, he's gonna jump out the car and uh whole car services yeah i mean it was it was it felt really good it looked really good people walking every you know what i mean like the old days when there was just you know forty thousand people walk into the stadium it was really good so yeah bill cole is here like gordian my curiosity goes to this, you know, is that something that is being experienced by lots of people, right? Well, clearly it is when they have 35,000 people there on a Sunday afternoon, the first to kick off the season. Like if that's the starting point, first couple nights were slow, the weather, it's the weather, the weather, the weather. I mean, dude, the weather was so beautiful on Monday and Tuesday, Sunday, Monday and Tuesday this week. If you had any Jones at all that you want to go see Jackson Holiday, Adley Rutschman, go to a game, get outside, walk around, support David Rubenstein, support, you know, just whatever. Like, it was a really good excuse to go to the ballpark. And they had decent crowds Monday and Tuesday, but kids are still in school. They're playing the games earlier, the 630 thing. I mean, as I get to be older, I'm like, I don't know if I'd like it if I lived in Rising Sun. Or if I lived in Forest Hill, or if I lived in even Hereford or Shrewsbury, but like, it's also over at nine fifteen, which is also cool. I I don't know what that means for like the Baja Beach Club and me, and then your boy to say, okay, there's an opportunity. To, like the game's over, and we can use the night and go to Tio Pepe's after the game, or get dinner. Like I don't know when it becomes a later, earlier thing, or really invigorates the city. And this is the thing where if I'm sitting with David Rubenstein and Look, one way or another, they're either going to let me in and have a press pass or they're not. Either way, I'm going to be heard from. I mean, like, and I hope they let me in and I hope that we're all cool and I'm a part of it. I don't feel a part of it when I'm watching it on TV. And Brett Hollander saying his dog has a press pass. Truly, he said that on the radio. His dog has a press pass. Um, but that being said, watching it from the outside and trying to evaluate it, 
the, the top line is this. They're going to be a really good baseball team for a couple of years. Like they have a real chance. Here. Like they have a chance to win your son, your daughter, your dog, my cat. Every, everybody's in. Right? Right. What I am agree. I wearing right now? Right. I'm wearing a I Curio agree. Wellness orange Baltimore bird shirt. By the way, it's 420 weekend. Get over there and take advantage. By the way, Bill, if you if you have aches and pains, this move product over at Foreign Daughter, very, very, very effective, uh, especially on my L3 and L4 where I got things going on back there. But um, they're going to win. What's that going to mean? Well, that, uh, my question is, is the the improved interest and vigor from the fans, is that just pent up demand and, oh, yeah, it's OK now. Let's go. Let's get down there. Or are the Orioles actually doing something from a marketing standpoint? Yeah, they're winning to move, to move the needle. Well, winning, uh, not well, winning in Tampa didn't mean the same thing. To your point, teachers in school wearing stuff, neighborhood, but they also didn't have Boog Pal and Brooks Robinson and this. My last name's Aparicio. The reason I'm on the planet and the reason I'm here is because of the baseball team and because they did special things in 1966, right? Yeah. Like so, they would have lost to the Dodgers in four straight. Who knows, right? <laughs> Who knows where I'd be? But I, I, I would just say there's a community here, and I always speak to lacrosse. And I speak to some degree to soccer, but you can do both. Lacrosse and baseball really intersect in a sort of a weird way. If you're a kid, boy or girl, and you're in the, you know, outside of the butterfly and you're a lacrosse person, that there's a lot of lacrosse time spent, especially when the games are 630, right? You move the games back now, all of a sudden you can't see the games. Um, that I would just say what this means for the city is my big question, to your point. People coming back. Are they just parking, going in and leaving? Are they sticking around? Are they thinking, I'd like to live here? Or, I'd like to move here? Or, I'd like to come back on Friday when the team's not here and go to the aquarium? I, I'm making that part of it up, but all of that's important. And then to, to my original point, politically, sociologically, Fox 45E, now the Baltimore Sun, is owned by the, by the gypsies. There's this muscle memory of... I mean, you're, you're 15 minutes late on this call because you can't get off the highway because of the bridge, right? You've already had a bad morning and it's 8 a.m. because, like, everybody's got 20 more minutes in other directions if you used anything that looks like the tunnels or the bridges because of the tragedy that happened here three weeks ago. And we're all trying to figure that out. So this muscle memory of I'm going to go downtown again. It's, it's the basis of everything we're doing. My 25th anniversary documentary is coming out next week. We turned Baltimore positive seven, eight years ago about turning the city around, I did free the birds, not in any, I mean, you can go back and look it up. I wrote a book. I didn't do any of it to be a dick. I did it because I saw the city deteriorating. I looked out my window on this view and saw no one going to ball games again. And I bought property downtown and lived there for another 17 years. So all of this was about Baltimore, making Baltimore better. To your point, used to be 13,000 people coming down on a Sunday in April. Now there's 35,000. What did that mean for Amici's? What did that mean for all the businesses? How many people stuck around? Once they fixed the harbor, because there's nothing there to like really grab you at this point, Cheesecake Factory, to come through and grab a meal or, or gather there in that area, that's what all of that was set up for 30 years ago when Janet Marie designed all this and all of that. But what does this mean with that muscle memory of people coming back down? If your your boy went down and had a good time, he might go back when there's not a ball game. And that's an exposure that we've been trying to reach for years, Bill, you and I. How do we get people back downtown and how do we get them to come back again? Yeah, I would also, as just a nice quick public service announcement, somebody really needs to run a campaign on 95 of of like find your kindness your your inner nice person and just recognize that the traffic sucks for everyone because man it is just really angry out there like well, people haven't but, experienced traffic and we experienced so three bad. years locked yeah. in a closet right nobody mm -hmm. went anywhere and people are driving like 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 maniacs. I mean, yeah. I, I, if there's anything, if I ran on a on a policy, and as I talk to policymakers, if there's anything, Johnny O, anything we that I would want to change as God, 
it would be we need to hire more police to police highways and start really, really getting the people who are doing 90 miles an hour drag racing off the highways. And, you know, I talked to Sheila Dixon. I said, what, what are we doing about the motorcycles in the city? We're still drag racing every Sunday. Like, these are quality of life issues when we lost life six months ago over on the west side of the Beltway in a tragedy that you would think that at some point we need a TSA for the high. We need, we need cops that just do nothing but drive the highways and make sure that we're not having that anymore because it's really – it's it, 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 everyone notices it. There's no one who drives anywhere that doesn't notice how lawless the driving's become. Right. I, I would just go a different route and – deeply invest in the autonomous vehicles like like we really don't need to be driving and it would all work better if we weren't driving and we can have special human driving areas and then you can still for those that actually enjoy you know the the, the sport of driving they can go there but getting up and down 95 the computer ought to be able to do that and i should be able to do something else we really need to get there because it will save so many lives that it needs to be a priority, right? Can like, you imagine that you and I as kids would talk about talking to each other on a television screen, right. on Zoom, and you would say something like that out loud? You know what I mean? Like if you would have called my radio show back when you were an intern here 25 years ago for the Bob Haney <laughs> right. show on, right. on Sunday mornings, and you and Bob Haney on a Sunday morning, and I would have been awakened out in Las Vegas on a date at 3 in the morning, and they would have said, dude, you got to get Haney and Cole off the air, man. They're talking about cars driving themselves stop this madness right, right? right. that's how far no, we've I, come I, I, I just had to pinch I, I, myself i had to pitch myself every time i think there's new oriole ownership but when you start talking about look dude the problem isn't the the cars are ticketing the problem is we're not using the computers to drive the cars the right way <laughs> right uh, well because all all the police officers are is putting another human in in risk at risk, right? Like, oh, I don't like, disagree with you. I mean, yeah, I like, would have no problem if they had speeding cameras every mile on every road. I wouldn't mind that kind of surveillance society to say, no, yeah, well, you know what? When you're on the road, we are going to monitor you. We're going to monitor every one of you MFers because you are more lives are lost, cancer, this, that, whatever, terrorism. We can go, more lives are lost by distracted texting, drunk driving weed driving, stupid driving, drag racing. I, I, I like, I would be very, yeah, I'm, I'm on not, clean I'm water interested. forever. You know I mean? I'm right. always on like, we have to have clean water. That's all like Don Muller would tell you right. my Liberty pure sponsorship that I love clean water. I think that's the way that you, you come after us if that in the grid. Right. But I think we're killing ourselves driving. And, um, yeah, I, I mean, I worry about my wife every time she goes down the street. I just think it's needless risk. There's enough risk in the world, to your point. Like, I, I think it's needless. I'm not interested in a surveillance state. I, I'm not interested in. I know you're not. My my elected officials having access to cameras capturing all of our. Like, well, how do you stop people from driving gets, 90 miles an hour this Monday? Because they're not having an automated car this week. Well, then we need kindness billboards. I'm with that. Should. No, no. Uh, like the, the only thing holding. The only thing holding back the autonomous vehicles is regulatory environment. Like, I fully believe that the computers are there, the systems are there. The problem is we can accelerate technology, you know, I don't know, a thousand times faster than we can pass a bill through legislation to allow for autonomous vehicles. Or, I mean we can't that's that's the that's the hardest part of it well that's the corporate lobby for keeping clean coal that's the corporate lobby for you know saying solar's a bad thing and and turbines cause cancer and stupid stuff 75 million people so are going to vote for lobby? that in november I, though okay so who's the lobby that's fighting against autonomous vehicles I don't you know know. What I mean? Right. I don't either. Like, that's what I mean. Uber it's, drivers. It's such a, it's such a need. Yeah. Well, okay. Louis so De Palma the taxi and taxi. Lobby, right. Right. Taxi yeah. Lobby, the medallion sure. lobby yeah, yeah, in New yeah. York City. Uh, the truck drivers union might be. Yes. Yeah, sure. Anybody who, anybody, I mean, I think at one point, the that's data a lot data, of people now. You're now well, you're, hold on. you know, that's where I was going. I think <laughs> at one point, the data 
point was like one in five jobs in America are transportation drive, oriented. Yeah, and drive, drive, yeah. and drive involved. What does Pete so, Buttigieg do if there's no transportation? <laughs> so we have to figure out. We have to figure out. You know where those people work. I get it. That's that's all part of the process. Like if they're good enough to be a professional driver, there's a whole lot of other things they can do in our world that are productive and meaningful and and give them gainful employment, but. The fact that we have tools that could prevent the loss of life, you know, uh, this week there was a head-on collision up in Hartford County. Oh. 36-year-old man, 44-year-old father, you know, like hit pretty close to our people right up there. And, like, it's just needless. It's needless and it's annoying and I don't, you know, I don't get it. Okay. Well, I, I think this started with baseball and transportation and getting places and getting to the game. I guess my bigger point is getting back to downtown. Yes. That the so bigger it's... picture of this is yes, Mr. Rubenstein, you invested two billion. Yes, you're going to make three billion. Yes, you're going to have fun. Yes, you get to make commercials with Cal Ripken, and it's and yes, the team's going to be good. And yes, they might win a World Series or five, and I'll sit here all day and talk about whether Gunnar Henderson's getting 200 million or whether Adley Rutschman's getting 150 million or whether, like, I, I, I love all of that. I've done all of that. What does, so what does that mean for bringing people downtown and keeping them and making young people like your son and your daughter want to come back and do something else and be, be a part of it, right? Be a part of the city and, and, and rejuvenate the city. And I'll go back to Purple Rain 1, Purple Rain 2, where I've written at length and the basis of my my career, as you'll see in the 25th anniversary next week, is that sports brings people together. Black people, white people, east, west, north, south, male, female, young, old, rich, poor, eastern shore, western shore, brings people together unlike anything. And the baseball team, we forgot that. You know, I did free the birds. It was all about that. It wasn't about F you to Peter Angelos. It was about, please sell the team to somebody sane so we can have this experience back. And we, we could get 3 million people back downtown and my condo might not, you know, lose a quarter of a million dollar in value over 20 years. Like all of these things that happened that I was predictive Nestor Damos back in 2006 with free the birds. You now have blue sky, good team, cities. Hit rock bottom. We have an election coming up. I had Sheila Dixon on last week. Brandon Scott, Ivan Bates, all of all of you can come on. Uh, Bill, Bill Fer I saw Bill Ferguson. I invite all these folks on. I had Shannon Sneed. I had Sheila Dixon on. I've had Zach Blanchard on. I'll have everybody on in the next three weeks that wants on. So there's an open invitation. If anybody heard Sheila and said, why'd you have her on? Not endorsing Sheila at all. Had Sheila on because I'm a I'm a, a community person. And I said, what's going to lift the city? Crime, education, schooling, all these things you and I have been talking about for eight years, as you pointed out in the 25th anniversary documentary. Um, but the baseball team being in local hands with Cal Ripken doing commercials every day with a team that's ungodly good. Like my wife still hasn't like. My wife loves baseball, but I keep saying, you have no idea how good these guys are. How, like, the pedigree of these players, I've never seen anything like it in my lifetime. Now, what's it going to mean for the city five years from now? Five years from now, whether there's a parade or not for either one of these franchises, what does this period of sports renaissance and $1.2 billion of our money invested in this and, and they can't put the freaking baseball game on on Friday, right? Friday night, your kids at the game. I hope you don't want to watch the game unless you had Apple, whatever the hell it is. Um, so these are issues. Baseball, to your point, a month ago, baseball is going to die. Mr. Rubenstein, you better do some things to save it. Now, today you're like, hey, Ness, you want to go to the game next week? They've come a long way. Now, how do they keep people there? And what does this mean for the city? I'm going to keep asking that question. Yeah, I, I, I was driving through downtown, I don't know, a day or two ago, and I'm pretty sure I saw, like, a new sports bar that I had never seen before, like Charles Light Street, somewhere in there. Okay. Uh, so, mm, you know, I don't know. Uh, there's there's indications. There's stuff. Uh, the Tech Hub, right? Did we talk about Tech Hub? Did you talk to, you know, Mark Anthony at, Thomas at the, he has uh, an open invite DC, for yeah. a year. So please book him. So that's like decades of 
investment and opportunity that will continue to drive really smart young people into our city, you know, and that's kind of like that, that's that uh, Baltimore gritty little foodie cool town that, that, that the young people a destination town with a really good baseball team. Well, but a place they want to live. Like they like when you're younger, you you don't you're not you're not evaluating public safety in the same way you are when you're raising a family or you're older and you don't feel like putting up with stuff anymore or whatever. So I think we have a really strong brand in the twenty one to thirty sector whether well i don't hear our town or... lead with murder the way it was five years ago anymore correct yeah i i yes i think there's good stuff being done. there's good stuff being done everywhere and and quite frankly i think we we hit on the the bridge as like well the bridge brought a huge the, spotlight to the, our city the potential ago. federal pixie dust that gets sprinkled on these cities when something terrible happens and the uh, 20 years of consequences that comes from that. I haven't been to New Orleans lately, speaking of that, right? When you say something like that with a tragedy in my lifetime, I think about New Orleans. I was there the night of the storm, literally. I I escaped that morning when the storm came in Katrina because the Ravens had played there that weekend. So, I mean, I remember how it felt there and what was going on. And then I remember going back a year later and seeing the lines from the floods and being like, Oh my God, the water went how high and the super, like all of the scenes of, you know, fats Domino on his route, like all of that. I haven't been to new Orleans in, you know, a number of years. It's, I mean, it's been, been a good decade since I've been to new Orleans since, you know, we won the super bowl. We went back the next year. So it's been since 14 that I've been, to see what that pixie dust means 20 years later, right? Really? Well, I, I mean, I think, you know, I have not been a party to conversations with people in the know in New Orleans, but people who I know who have been, people readily admit and acknowledge, right, the, the stimulus that occurs from that. So say what you want, like, it's going to happen one way or another. It's up to us to figure out how to do that in a way that is inclusive and meaningful and, you know, is building for the future, not in today's, you know, BS instant gratification way, you know, like we have some real opportunities, you know, there's a huge push of reshoring all our manufacturing. Well, who doesn't want to put their new manufacturing plant right on the water so they can ship their products all over the globe? Like, I mean, there's so much opportunity with this. And, okay, when you have a bridge, it has um, constraints, right? It's it, it already is a certain height, and it has a certain depth. And, well, we have an opportunity to change that. We can't change it because there's another bridge farther down the water, right? The Bay Bridge. So you're not going to be able to change that. Or maybe that is part of the longer 20-year plan, and maybe we've got to change that. And there's always been talk about a second bridge across the bay and all that. Well, that Larry Hogan was all about that. Yeah, I mean, there's always been talk. He's the, trying to uh, kill the red line all over again as the, center. So, well, right. uh, I'm happy to talk to him about that. I won't be voting for that. And and by the way, if if he wants to sit with me and the first three questions are about abortion, 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 uh, because women listen. Um, I If he doesn't want to sit and talk to me, that's shame on him. And if people vote for that, shame on them. So I would just say that out loud. I, I don't like I don't like sports owners or politicians who duck me or anyone who, who have questions when they're taking a billion two from the government, let's say, or trying to run for Senate. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm happy to talk about all that stuff, but Larry was the king of we need another bridge. I've always thought we needed the bridge from Aberdeen. I always felt like you you really want to get rid of the congestion, put something further north up, and that probably would really help things. And it probably would open the eastern shore and the western side of Delaware to – all of all of that boating country over there that we can't get to, Chestertown, yeah, you know. I, I I just want us to be able to create a viable ferry, like with your car, like a car ferry. Like, who doesn't like a good car ferry ride? Like that that that's fun. 
How does Did I ever tell you my best car ferry story? How is that not viable in, you know, at, in the Bay? How is that not viable? Have I ever told you about the time I went to Nova Scotia and um, I went to Moncton and I was going to go to Prince Edward Island? Are you familiar with Prince Edward Island? So it's muscles, your oysters come the from there. Come from. The right. Yeah, yeah. PEI. Right. So um, Prince Edward Island is an island. It's 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 a land, you know, it's 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 a land mass in the middle of sort of nowhere in Canada, north of Moncton, sort of a little west of New Brunswick. And um, I met hockey players from there. OK, it's a little place, but. I, I Doug McLean is from there, who was once the Skipjacks coach, a guy named Tyler Larder, a guy named Kent Painter. They were Skipjacks and they were all from PEI. And they were always saying, you got to come to PEI, man. You got to get on a boat to come. We don't even they're building a bridge. This is in 1986, 7, 8. You'll learn in the documentary about my Skipjacks past. Right. So all these years pass and I've been friends with Doug McLean forever. Um, and he's a hot shot. Canadian television hockey expert and the professor and all that good stuff. So they'd always told me to go to PEI. So my wife and I went up and this was the weekend that Scunny died from Nacho Mamas. Uh, we were seeing chasing Bruce Springsteen up in Moncton a place called magnetic Hill wild place. We take your kids someplace there. Google magnetic Hill Moncton wild um, car goes up the hill because of the magnet weird. Anyway, we were going to Prince Edward Island. And we were going to make a day of it. We were going to go to Charlottetown and get some fish or something, right? And there's this giant bridge, giant bridge, bigger. I I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. It's bigger and longer than the Bay Bridge, but not as long as the Hampton, Norfolk crazy thing that my wife thought I was making up when I told her there was a bridge tunnel until we did it. So, but it's really long. It was the most expensive project in the history of the Canadian government to build this bridge to unlock Prince Edward Island from what you pointed out. The only way you could get there was on a ferry. And the three residents I knew as hockey players 40 years ago would always tell me about it. So my wife and I pull up to the bridge and there's a beautiful um, big, big house, you know, uh, with, with all the storytelling and the, we went in park had to pee, right? Let's pee. We go to pee. And they got a movie and they had a trip. They showed us how they built the bridge. People died making the bridge. They always do. Right. And they had this beautiful film. So we're sitting there for 20 minutes. We're looking around. We're looking around and we go to leave. The bridge was like forty five dollars to cross. So it's going to cost us forty five dollars just to go have lunch in Charlotte. We never crossed the bridge, Bill. So we came back. And I had Doug McLean on. I'm like, Dougie, I. I went up to Prince Edward Island and I got to the bridge and it was 41 bucks, man. And I like, I didn't do it. He's like, you gotta be kidding me. He said, we, we've spent all of this money. We did all of this ingenuity. He said, can I ask you if it would have been a ferry and it would have been 15 bucks, would you have done it? And I'm like, yeah, of course I would have done it. It would have been fun. It would have been a ferry. <laughs> That's my point. That's exactly my point. <laughs> Like, who doesn't want to take a ferry? You just drive your car on. So I still haven't been to Prince Edward Island. Get a boat ride. Yeah, I agree. I, I think I'm the looking at The bridge killed the ferry. Just so you know, right now, I'm <laughs> um, sorry, the 2023 rates for that bridge, it is $50.25 for a car to cross that bridge. The Prince Edward Island Bridge? Yep. $50. I... That is insane. That's, That's crazy. why I didn't do it. <laughs> That's crazy. In Canadian money, it's only about 38, but it's still a lot, you know? Bill Cole is here. I love him. He makes me laugh. 20 bucks to get a motorcycle. Well, I get on the back of a bit of cheaper lunch. Uh, tell everybody what you do. Um, you did something. I got a press release from you. You did something, like, really cool on a church this week. Big white top. I don't know what the heck it was. Tell, please tell me. Yeah. Um, boy. That... We'll have to pull the press press release up yeah. for that? 
That's one way to make me look like I have no idea what's going on. No, no, no. I, I like literally I, I got something in my email the other day that said you guys did something at the Colonial Baptist Church. You did a roof replacement, uh, correcting issues that caused significant damage to the church. They had a skylight. You, you know, I, I have all this verbiage here that I can read in your next ad. Coal roofing really thrives when we work with customers who have challenging construction and usage problems. You're delighted to have been a part of that solution, completing the project on time and on budget with an emphasis on the safety of members, employees, and workers. So there you go. Is that good? That's that's pretty much exactly what we do every single day <laughs> so yeah that's well done by the marketing people here <laughs> i re i yeah. give good commercial i don't know if you know that and or that not. was really good uh yeah no, i mean that is a prime example of like we've been doing this a long time and my people genuinely get like work satisfaction out of being presented with a challenge and a problem and then helping to you know solve that problem with the customer you know one big team like like we we need we need understand what needs to happen and then we're going to try and figure out a way to make that happen and that that's what gives our people just that that satisfaction of their job and it helps for engagement and Nobody sees roofs, dude. This is a beautiful roof on this church. I'm looking at it right now, and I'm thinking nobody would see it unless you had a drone take a picture of it. Like, you know, because people don't think about their roof till it leaks. We talk about this all the time, you know? It's like I don't need a dentist till I get a toothache, period. Yeah, we're we're really working hard trying to get – to continuously get this message out there that – to your point, out of sight, out of mind. I totally get it. I'm a very logical, realistic person. But by doing minimal maintenance work along the way, you can seriously extend the life of the roof, which is hundreds of thousands of dollars in, in the lifetime, right? So You like, really don't want to put a new roof on a person. Yeah, that you, you really it, don't, right. And I get that. And we want to help you do that. Like we, like it's sort of uh, cannibalism, right. Of our own, like we do re roofs, we replace roofs, but at the same time, we'd really much prefer to get involved and catch little problems before they become big problems. And instead of it wrecking your business at a time when you can't afford it, um, you know, I see these vegetated roof systems and solar, you know, you, you, you've, created a situation where it could become a a, a, a a zero zero you know it it, it, it can literally yeah. take away something and add value and and uh you know be something nice too you well, make the, nice the, roofs the solar is you know i mean we are at the place I, i've been saying this for a long time but i think we're finally there like if you're getting a commercial roof done and you're not getting a integrated solar roof price for comparison purposes i'm not saying it's necessarily going to be right for everybody but everyone in the marketplace today should know what those two opportunities cost and be able to do the evaluation on that in the same way whether you decide whether you so want an electric sense. vehicle or get like you have right. those up you have those options now right it makes a ton of sense and they are you know the government is still heavily incentivizing it and they're very lucrative projects for the people who it, it take it's a little bit of education right like it's buying something that you've never bought before and it, it has a life expectancy you know similar to like the mortgage on your house and it's a 25 year warranty and it's a it's a long-term concept but i highly encourage people to at least kick the tires on it and understand it Bill Cole is here, Cole Roofing, Gordy Energy. Last thing, because you do have to go and I got to go, but you're the only person that has seen the document. You haven't seen the, because it's not completely done, but you have seen the rough in of the documentary in its totality. My wife hasn't seen it. My son doesn't want to see it till it's done. Is there anything you want to like warn the audience in regard to the documentary? Uh, no, I mean, I think that makes me feel pretty special. Thank you. Uh, I anticipate that I am one of you know tens of millions of views that will occur because it is such a core piece of like like 
I'm reliving my life through your life, right? Like my experiences at those times were different or I was different age or whatever, but all of those things are all meaningful to anyone who's like been in our area for a lifetime. Yeah. So it's super fun to watch how you move through the world. Um, you know, well, the world we, moves through when the we get really me, old, really right, like when, when we get really old, we'll, we can have wonderful, fun conversations about when your moniker becomes nasty, you know, full well going in. And maybe you didn't realize it at the time as well as you do today that that's got positive and negatives to it. And for people who can't stop to think long enough to understand that it's a moniker and it's a you know it's a there's a, so much more to that it's just amusing to me um so i'm glad you're telling the story because it it's fun to to take nasty nester and and kind of peel back the onion a little bit and uh I, you'll you know, laugh I'm, you'll cry you'll be amazed yeah, right, right. right exactly it's the way you want to spend your sunday afternoon yeah so you know. no 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 it's coming out on thursday at 508 for all you free the birds folks out there 508 p.m next thursday uh april 25th uh it will be released at a an internet near you uh, there you go in in sound in around pocket. in your pocket in, in smell of vision uh, I am Nestor, he is Bill Cole We are WNSD AM 1570 Towson, Baltimore, we never stop talking Baltimore, positive Come see us next week up at Green Mount Bowl Or down at Fadley's